hottest skin y'all i've been trying to record this about four or five times at this point but <laughs> welcome back to yet another episode of ayana lene tv it's your girl ayana lene yeah um in this episode was a little special installment where i'm giving the girls what they asked for um for you or for those of you who have maybe been following me on ig you know that i recently um kind of relaunched uh, my content page originally it was like my business page um that was named after my grandmother but um, you know, we're shifting focus, you know, different era of life. Um, so now I'm just working on putting on more lifestyle content centered around fashion, um, fitness, self-care, you name it, baby. But um, anyways, um, I actually posted a poll on that page last week. And actually, let me go ahead and, you know, just drop that right here so y'all can make sure y'all hit that follow button. And I'm going to want to make sure you're following that page and subscribe because I got some new exciting things coming up. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. But um, I had posted a poll on my story um, just to see what type of content girls wanted to see moving forward. And it seems like, you know, based off the poll, people wanted to hear a little bit more just about um, how I've stayed consistent in my fitness journey. Before we even get into that, I'm going to tell y'all I'm so big on letting people know and reiterating and emphasizing that I don't believe fitness is a one-size-fits-all journey. I thoroughly believe you should take into account what your goals are, you know, who you are. You you know what you need. Um, all I can do is tell you what work for me. Yeah, I might know a little something, but I ain't no professional. You know, the body is still very much T. Yeah, so let's get into it. On my way to Pilates right now. So after I leave Pilates, uh, we'll get a little bit more um, into my tea and you know my tips so uh, yeah stay tuned for that as i'm literally driving y'all i'm just kind of like quickly looked at my um the last clip i shot and i was looking at my hair i said first of all now why would y'all let my hair look like that tea for real but that's first one of the tips we can really get into is one when it comes to your like maintenance specifically your hair i know my black girl specifically i know something that really discourages a lot of us from staying consistent is really we like to have our hair done and i ain't mad at you especially if you is a natural girl you get silk presses things like that baby just you trying to preserve the leaves out my biggest tip for you is to plan your maintenance days around you know your fitness like routine you know like play around with tricks for as far as to be able to protect your edges um and also just be sure not to trap moisture in your hair baby if you follow me on tiktok oh my gosh please go look at my tiktok and see my major failure that i had when i thought i was doing me a little different method completely dumb whatever you do don't do that method okay <laughs> you know if you can't you don't feel comfortable walking around in wraps i'm a rap girl baby i ain't have no shame rolling them in a wrap you know, not other girls is like that, and I totally get that. So if that's not you, you know, don't feel the need um, to do the rap method. What I tell girls who, if you know you can't do the rap, always try to opt for if you can do a high pony, always opt for high pony. Keep your hair as much off of your neck as you possibly can and out of your face, um, and do not let your hair down until it dries completely. That is the biggest thing. Is baby, you need to wear that um, until the edges dry. Yeah, y'all be trying to take it off too soon, and that's why your hair be puffed up. T, all right? That's the first tidbit. Don't let that hair dry, baby, okay? Protect them edges or simply pin it around. Like, I know for me specifically, when I have my hair done, I'm not blending my hair throughout the week. I feel like that's kind of dumb. I know I work out at least five days a week. I do high Pilates. It just makes no sense for me to straighten my hair out throughout the week just because, like, I'm usually not going anywhere significant. That I need to do that unless it's a week where I'm going into okay. I am officially made it to Pilates. I am like maybe only a few minutes early, not as early as I like to be, but I don't have much on today, so I can just quickly strip when I get in here. But as I head into Pilates, that leads me actually to my next tip, which is to make sure you prioritize and find activities that you actually really enjoy doing so like for me i feel like you all kind of can tell by now i really really enjoy pilates um my best friend i was saying best friend of mine she actually enjoys yoga so that is something that really makes it a lot easier to really just enjoy working out is when you find those classes and different activities that really kind of get you out your comfort zone so yeah pilates is mine Hello. 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 Hello.
Right, so I successfully survived yet another day of Pilates. I went into class. One of the keys to staying consistent is finding activities that you actually enjoy that are fitness related. Because um, I know before I found Pilates, one thing that I used to do was um, I did um, pole classes. And I, those type of classes are really good for your core and um, your upper body. So don't sleep on, you know, being able to have fun and being able to work out because I find that's a common misconception is that working out has to be like all work no play but i'm a full believer in i can't enjoy it if i can't have a little fun with you you feel me so yeah so i'm about to you know good games gotta have a protein shake after any and every workout because that's another thing y'all be doing y'all be eating right get your life right eat right yeah Another tip that I have, because I'm always getting questions about how I make and time to work out as much as I do. And let me just say, I'm a firm believer in we make time for what we want to make time for. For me, personally, I have a little bit more flexibility in my schedule because I work from home on, a, on usually a daily basis. I rarely go into the office. So I'm able to kind of like more for going working out in my schedule um, because I'm one, I'm not micromanaged at my job. Um, <laughs> so it makes it a little bit easier for me. And so what I do is try to plan going to the gym around my work schedule. So if I know I'm gonna leave, I know that me making it to the Pilates at four o'clock in Atlanta is a privilege of mine, okay? I recognize that about myself. Okay? The things in mind as far as just like when you're trying to plan a set schedule, you know, like really take the time to think about your week, be very intentional about it. Um, because yeah, like I always try to spend at least Sunday thinking about what my week may or may not look like. And then I go from there as far as like planning, like, okay, like this is the day I'm doing the bodies. This is the day, like if it's a busier day, I try to do lighter workouts. For example, like if I have a lot of meetings, I usually opt for doing like an upper body day, just because my upper, upper body days aren't as strenuous as other workouts, so. another piece of advice is set a set budget set a budget for your fitness expenses whether that be fees for memberships whether that be paying for classes whether that be buying different equipment or also like buying gym clothes you know like a girl likes to get cute and i'm a firm believer in you look good you feel good and you do even better so incorporate that in to your budget because that is something that i can say can really discourage people if you really want to do like things like Pilates, because Pilates can get expensive. Like I know for me, I know that can add up, you know, if you want to do at least two classes a week, you know, that can add up and be upwards $300 a month just for you to work out. And so that's something you really need to take into account when you start doing classes like Pilates and yoga. Um, another tip that I have for people that are in that position is that to sign up for things like ClassPass, where you can pay um, just a fee to get credits and take classes like throughout, like wherever the area that you live in. Um, I'm pretty sure class passes in most areas. I know it's in Atlanta. Um, I want to say it's in too, but definitely look into that because I think that's a lifesaver for many. If you kind of know you don't want to stick to maybe like one particular studio, like I know for me, I like one studio for Pilates and another studio for yoga. So I wouldn't care to be a member at either studio, but class packs work per perfectly for me. So that's another one economically reasonable for yourself because maybe it's a recession. Don't you forget that. I'm finally back and ready to hop in the shower um, after my walk and Pilates. Um, getting back to my initial point that I feel like, you know, with the influx of influencers on social media, specifically Instagram, who post a lot of fitness content, I think just the way things are targeted um, to reach audiences, they can be a little bit misleading. Um, I think one thing you have to keep in mind was like when you're like following influencers, like workout regimens and things like that is that you have to keep in mind like looking at the specific body shape, their body type, you know, and just taking into consideration like any special like needs that you may have. Like, you know, I know specifically like people who may have like, um, like, like specifically like diabetes, like things like that where there may be things, special considerations that you have to think about when it comes to building a new diet, things like that. So just think about that. Like, you know, before you just go into like looking at some fitness influencer and be like, I want to look like her. Like, baby, I know I'm a slim thick girl. 
I'm not hip dominant. So I know that me looking at an influencer that's hip dominant would be actually really dumb of me. Because, you know, I can do all I want to like spread these hips, baby, but baby, I'm very much quiet dominant. So, you know, the influencers that I look at and the people that like, I'm like, okay, well, that for my inspiration are going to be people that are a little bit more quiet dominant. Like, I'm not going to look at them as hippie and be like, oh, I don't want to look like her. Baby, I'm going to have to buy them hips. And, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, but that's one to keep it journey so like that's kind of like two tips is like one just to be mindful of that your journey is your own it will not be identical to anybody else's so even me giving you tips and y'all following me and seeing what i do just know what i do yeah i, I can't do it like me and i can't do it like you and that's that's the beauty of being you and me being me you feel me <laughs> yeah baby i ate that one i'm really a philosopher and i like part time you even case i ain't know <laughs> But um, that kind of just also just brings me to like another point where it's like you need to focus on areas like of your body that you want to build. So like for instance, for me, so y'all can see the tummy. For me personally, like I know my core is really important to me, so a lot of the exercises I focus on are my core. Um, and my and my booty, yeah. So legs and core um workouts are like what I like to focus on. But, um, you know, I don't do as much upper body anymore just because um, my upper body is pretty much like toned to where I want it at. Focus on my back. You can't see that right now, but y'all know <laughs> she's pretty. Yeah, don't worry about that. For mindset, because I always say mindset is everything. So if you don't come in with the mindset of like, I'm going that you're committed, you're going to be intentional about it, then you probably won't be. Like <laughs> I always say it's a mindset thing. If you have the mindset of like, I hate this, I don't want to do this thing, you probably aren't going to follow through with it. You really, and again, it takes time. Like even for me, it took time. I gradually over time had to build up the mindset where I'm like, I actually enjoyed this. I'm intentional about this. Like what's really helped me is that I don't set specific times to get to the gym. I set time frames. So for instance, I always say my goal is to be at the gym before 12 PM every day. But I know if I was to say like, I want to get to the gym at 10 AM every day, that's unrealistic for me. I may have a meeting at 10 AM. That may make me want to push it back. And I know for a lot of people, once they kind of have like set that mental note and they see that they haven't been able to reach it, they're like, oh damn, forget about it. And so again, like set yourself a little bit like of a larger window just to be able to work with and have some flexibility. You're not going to get the mind where it needs to be. It's going to be a long journey for you. But again, I will say it takes time. I can say, what does it take? 30 days to go to habit or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, so just keep that in mind. Nothing happens overnight. Like, so make sure you're taking pictures of your progress as you go along. Like, that's something I feel like I didn't do as well in the beginning. So I can actually, like, really, like, go back and have those constant, constant reminders. Because one thing that will creep into your mind and really have you, like, feeling like, oh, I'm not doing nothing for real. I'm not making my progress is body dysmorphia. When I tell you, you'll look in the mirror and be like, Dang, like, I feel like I'm getting smaller. I'm not, I'm getting bigger or whatever. Baby, when I tell you, take those pictures so you can go back and look at yourself and be like, okay, look, I do see a difference. Even if it's small, like, it, it, when I tell you even small, like, down to one of the biggest things, like, I noticed was just how my cheeks started sitting up. And I'm like, ooh. And that just kept me going. Like, you know, and definitely there was times I was like, I, I don't see anything. But that's when you just like, look. I, I can't do this no more. Like, I don't even, you know, because when you just see how far you come, that is a reminder that if I keep going, I'm going to get there, okay? So, yeah, basically, you have to be willing to like, kind of like get out of your comfort zone, especially if you're somebody like me, and I usually am not fond of really having to ask for help. I usually try to figure things out on my own, but this journey was very humbling, and I had to recognize that I definitely had to seek other people for help. And so that's something that I definitely would encourage y'all that if you get to a point where you're like, okay, I don't know what workouts I should be doing for my body type. Like, I don't know what workouts target this, this specific area, like my midsection area or anything like that. You know, don't be afraid to ask people that you know maybe have in your corner and that maybe more experienced or professional um, and can give you the right answers because, again, that'll just prolong your journey. You know, like, you could be doing things, you know, one way and be doing it the wrong way the whole time. Like, I know biggest thing for me was, like, my form. It's, like, I had to get my form right. And once I started, like, and when I'm a hard-headed, we used to be people, like, trying to tell me, you need to do this, you need to do that. And, girl, I wasn't listening to them. And I ain't even going to lie to you. But eventually, I took heed and I started to see the difference. And just, I wasn't aching as much. And I felt better when I was doing certain workouts, so... I don't mean, ask your girl, okay? I, I, I don't got all the answers, but what I can do is point you in the right direction to somebody who might. Yeah, I'm always ready, 
you know, plug my girl. It's just in case. T, yeah. Mm -mm. I'm not even gonna hold y'all one of my favorite parts about Pilates. Well, actually, I think my favorite part is the hot shower. I take after Pilates when I get home. Oh, baby. Okay. With all that sweat from being in that hot sauna of a room. Oh, it feels so good. Just in case y'all want the skin routine, I've been using this. That's not the point. Because <laughs> we supposed to be talking about fitness and I still care. So, as I was saying before, you know. You know, persistence and patience is key. Um, if I would have gave up within that first year of me working out, maybe the glutes would not be where they are. The tummy wouldn't be where they are. Now, I've always had a pretty small stomach, but it's toned up now, okay? My back wouldn't look as good. You know what I'm saying? So, basically, you know, it at least took me six months to about a year before I started seeing a lot of results. But I bet I wasn't getting results. They just weren't as visible. So, um, just looking at myself. So, because that's normal. Um, but yeah so that's a big one um another thing um just with per to prevent injury i said the water time is to stretch okay like that's one thing i was not doing very well within like that first year to a year and a half i would stretch maybe if i went to a class but like actually stretching before my workouts very rare but now it's gotten to a point where i would at least do a five minute stretch before every single workout and i noticed the difference in my body tremendously um you should also be taking um into account Ooh, that you should be resting often. I think that's something that's not emphasized enough um, when it comes to just like people talking about their fitness journeys. Like I feel like, you know, all people talk about is like the grind and the work and you know, all you doing to do it, but not, I don't feel like there's enough talk about just the fact that you do have to give yourself some grace. Like you do need to at least be cooperating at least two, to, at least two to three days a week of you just resting. And, you know, and I would say if you're gonna do like a three-day rest day, it's best to have like one of those rest days being a restorative day. And so that's why I said like things like yoga are good for that because um, they're not, those aren't strenuous like things like on your body. So just a little tip it there. If you're not resting, you're gonna hurt yourself. And I mean, there's nothing you're gonna do about that. Um, so make sure you're stretching. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. But yeah, just make sure you're stretching because you don't want to yourself. Um, and I'm pretty sure most of you all follow me on IG. That is why every every time I post my polls, I always have an option for if you're resting or not. Because it's kind of just um, a subconscious way that I'm trying to just got, get people, remind people that it's okay for you to take rest. Like, it's the, the option is there because I'm trying to remind people that you should be resting. It's okay for you to have a, to have a rest week because you keep going, going, going. Your muscles is going to be like, it's going to break. They need time to grow, you know what I'm saying? And things like that, so. And so, as we wrap up <laughs> this special edition of Y'all and ATV, I think the last piece of advice that I would give you all is that you really just make sure you find one or two girlfriends, and in this case, because I know men be watching my channel too, friends, or just people in general that will support you along this journey because it gets tough. Um, I know I can't give credit to my best friend. Shout out to my girl, Rayanne, period, who is my best friend, the rest of um, <laughs> She really was the one who kind of just motivated me. Um, she actually was like, went to the gym maybe once or twice with her. And then from there, it kind of just ignited a fire in me. And from there, like, I really have been consistent. I'm not going to say, I have been consistent. I have a lot of consistency then. Because me and her kind of have been in this together. I would truly say I started my journey with her. Friends um, and things like friends and people in your corner that will support you um, in this. Because, again, it's by far it's not easy. Um, I know some people can do it alone and it's real personal for them. Hey, I ain't mad at it. Um, now, granted, I don't like working out with people. I go to the gym with you. You do your work, I do mine. But, um, yeah, we started like accountability group chats. Um, even if it was, we would just go in a group chat just to say, like, this is what I ate today. And... This is the workout I did. Like, when I tell you that accountability group chat that we had with two of my other girlfriends was a lifesaver at times because, you know, I feel like there was, we would go weeks, sometimes days without writing there. We, one person would come here and be like, well, I, have, I haven't heard from everybody, but I did this, 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 and that. And I think it would then ignite the others to then go on. So it's, it ends up being kind of like a ripple effect. And so that's why I say that if you have that luxury of having people who are 
equally as invested and interested in starting this journey with you, be sure to consult with them and bring them along so that to just make it easier. And it's almost always better when you can build a community around it. And I think that's what I've really enjoyed about my process is that being able to share it with y'all, I've been able to build a community and it just makes it a little bit more fun. I like hearted. So yeah, shout out to y'all. Shout out to my girls that have been there for me. But anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed all these little tips that I have for y'all. Um, if y'all enjoyed them or if y'all want more, put them in the um, comments here to, to, to serve y'all the way y'all want me to be served, okay? But anyways, um, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Until next time, it's your girl, Ayana Lene. Yeah. <laughs>